Hi folks, welcome to the third party engineering and acquisition of British Armour Group, Teabag, competition round three, the results. Thank you all for your patience while I completed the judging process. And thank you too to those who responded to my poll about how to handle the workload going forward. Your input is appreciated. And as a result, I have a couple of announcements to make before we get on to the results proper. First, for round four onwards, entries will be limited to one per Reddit account. Secondly, I am in the process of recruiting assistance in the judging process, which will hopefully save me from burnout and mean that we can keep these contests going on on a regular time frame. Thirdly, from now onwards, the time frame will be standardised to two weeks from the challenge being posted, which will always be on a Saturday, by the way, to the closing date, then 13 days from the closing date to the results being posted, which will always be on the preceding Friday, and we'll see how that goes for a bit. It may be that with judging help, I can roll them out a bit faster than that, but I don't want things to become unsustainable. Okay, with that all out the way, I want to say a big thank you to the 20 Redditors who contributed entries to round three. Some of you even posted two designs, giving a total of 26 competing vehicles overall. This was a seriously tough contest to judge. Those of you who have been competing since the start have clearly been learning from each other, which is very, very cool. And it's resulted in the quality of the entries going up drastically across the board. The sales pitches were masterpieces. The vehicles looked gorgeous. Most of them were unfazed by the obstacles of the proving ground. Improvements from most of you across the board. So well done to everyone. And thank you for sharing with me your fantastic designs. I really enjoyed testing them out. I'm conscious that this might intimidate potential new entrants, but if you're watching, and thinking of joining in Teabag, let me just say that new entrants are always, always very welcome. And the regulars in this contest are all super helpful people. And if you want to learn how they do what they do, just drop them a message or comment on one of their posts. And I'm sure that they'll be more than happy to share their knowledge. Teabag is at the end of the day about helping people to improve at tank design and to hold people's interest in this awesome game, Sprocket, while we wait for Hamish to drop the next set of new features. All right, that's enough of my rambling. On to the reason you are here, the results. First up, the sales pitches category. And the winner in this category is... The A75 Valkyrie Vanga by Luminous Lily. This was a fantastic pitch that scored highly across the board, but got a perfect score for being in character. Not only did we get a full backstory and logo for the company of Valkyrie Motorworks, but also were introduced to a compelling and fleshed out CEO, a character with strengths and weaknesses, and a manner of speaking all their own. A perfect score was also awarded for being extremely in-depth. We got a full rundown of the vehicle's features and explanations for why they are there and the why they are the way they are. A detailed stat sheet was the icing on this particular cake. The salesmanship and pictures were both worthy of a 9 out of 10 each. No Photoshop witchcraft going on here, just tasteful filtering to give the effect of well-framed photos freshly taken on a camera from 80 years ago. A total score then of 9.5 out of 10 in this category for the Valkyrie Vanga. Well done. Next up is the aesthetics category. And the winner in this category is... Well, actually it's a joint win. For the A8 Cicada, is that how you say it? I've never been sure. I should have looked this up before I started recording. I've said it now, though. Anyway, the A8 by Decca Daves. And the Matador by DXSC2020. These two entries both scored a very impressive 9.25 out of 10 each. Yet, while I couldn't separate them on score... If you held a gun to my head and told me to pick one, well, for me, this time, it would be the Matador. And for this reason, and because you may remember that Decades was our aesthetics category winner last time too, I'm going to touch briefly upon the A8 and then take a slightly more in-depth look at the Matador by DXSC 2020. The A8 Kikada is a gorgeous little light tank that as is typical for Decade's work, scores top marks for detail and era appropriateness. 
he even one-upped himself by not only having his external stowage crafted from trench tails and structural panels with the half-open lid, but also having things hastily shoved into that half-open lid, giving a reason for the lid not being properly closed. There's almost a story going on in the design. The Kikadas also got plenty of British design cues, though there was room to score a point or so higher in this regard, mainly because I consider these tracks to be quintessentially American. Where it didn't score as highly, however, was in the X Factor column, which is essentially a measure of how cool or interesting the design looks. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a very well thought out and awesome design, but it's also quite conservative, and honestly looks so much like my own test design for this contest that, well, it just didn't have the same wow factor for me as The Matador by DXSC2020. In contrast to Decker Dave's design, there were a couple of points lost here for era appropriateness and national identity, but this design knocked it out of the park in detail and X-Factor. How do you get 10 out of 10 for X-Factor? You use techniques and ingenuity I've never seen before to produce a look that isn't supposed to be possible in the game. What I love about this design are the things I would never have thought of, but that really work. First off, we have these decals. Now, these are not the right decals you would see on a British tank from this era. One of them is the sprocket loco for a start, but if you squint, then they have been applied in such a way as to pass as the closest possible analogue we have for a yellow bridge rating badge and a division insignia to go alongside the national identification marking. Really nicely done. I love this. By the way, as a side note, we did get at least one French tank roundel again this time round. Uh, it's it's not it's not British. It's not right. It's, it's it's French tank. It's French. It's French. Don't do French. I think people maybe are confusing it for the RAF roundel, uh, which looks like this. But it's 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 not. And and even this would be wrong on a tank. Use this one. Thanks. Anyway, next up is this funky grill on the engine deck of the Matador behind the turret. Uh, look at this. What What is this? Okay, okay, it's, it's fender parts. But I've never seen them used like this, and I have no idea how you thought this up, DXSC2020, but it's awesome, and I love the look it gives. And the way you've altered their sizes to make a custom-shaped grill, it's, it's fantastic. The handles are just the icing on the cake here. It's magnificent, and it's really pleasing on the eye too. Next, I want to touch on the fenders. Now, these aren't your ordinary in-game fenders. No, no. These are lovingly crafted to resemble the fenders of the A9, A10, and Valentine tanks of the British Army. They are sexy. And I hate that I now won't be able to be satisfied with my own designs until I recreate this. Finally, check out this tow hitch. Yep. It's just, it's just genius all over. This design is. It's a super cute, impeccably detailed little machine that looks for all the world like it could be a replica. So, very well done. And as two people with an eye for aesthetics, it's not surprising that both of these two designers also gave us some lovely Photoshop work for their sales pitches. Here is an A8 in real life. And here's the Matador being deployed from a real Hammerclad glider. Yes, yes, that soldier's hand is on the Matador's fender. Yes, yes, I've also been losing sleep over that. <clears throat> anyway, moving swiftly on now to the category nobody can say ten times quickly, specification criteria exceeded. Yay, I did it. And the winner in this category is... The Curassier by Clockyard. Awarded a perfect 10 out of 10 for being the highest scoring vehicle in this category, the Curassier is something of a head-scratcher. It's physically one of the smaller designs entered into this ground, and yet the amount of stuff that Clockyard has managed to cram into it defies belief. With a winning score of 19 out of a possible 28 points in this category, it was here that I realised just how compromised the specification for this challenge forced your designs to be. I've always tried to make a perfect score impossible, but this is perhaps the first time that that has irrefutably been the case. Anyway, the Curassier. What's good about it? Well, a lot, actually. But let's start with the armour. 
a 25mm effective minimum was stipulated, while the cuirassier scores maximum points for armour with between 60 and 100mm effective on the frontal hull and up to 115mm effective on the turret front. That's way in excess of the 50mm effective needed to get full marks for armour protection. Weight-wise, the cuirassier comes in at a featherweight 6.17 tonnes, which is low enough to grab all but one of the points available for light weight. In terms of speed, this was also one of the fastest designs, being so lightweight and with a very well worked out gearbox. The Cuirassier tops out at 31 miles an hour in my tests, gaining 4 out of 6 for top speed. Internal fuel reserves were only enough to score 1 point out of an available 5, but many designs stuck to the 200 litre minimum and got none. Ammo supplies are plentiful in this design, scoring 3 out of an available 5 for having 80 rounds available for the 3 pounder gun. Are you starting to see what I mean about wondering how he managed to fit all of this into a 6 ton tank? There were bonus points available for having a turret and for the roof of the vehicle being 6 foot high or lower, both of which this design also managed to score. That was lucky. So, a very impressive 10 out of 10 showing from our reigning champion in this category then. And our final category is the Proving Grounds. And the winner for this category is... The EAT-70 by Albino Creeper. You're watching the EAT-70 on its run of the Proving Ground course just now. This tank put on a truly outstanding display of mobility, hitting the acceleration target, reversing target, crossing all three trenches with ease, it's also able to climb the 35 degree incline, which is a hugely impressive feat all by itself. It has a well-tuned suspension that handles the bumps as well as all the trenches, and exhibits exemplary gun handling, dropping only one available point in total on the whole of this category. Finally, the Proving Grounds round concludes with a timed lap around a short course to test the tank's practical speed, cornering and ease of driving. With a lap time comfortably below 40 seconds, the EAT-70 picked up full marks here too, scoring a hugely impressive 9.5 out of 10 for the Proving Grounds category. Very nice work. And now, it's time to reveal our round three runner-up, and it is The Matador by DXSC2020. Hot on the heels of first place, yet still only 0.25 points ahead of third place, is our aesthetics category winner, the Matador. DXSC 2020 actually submitted two designs, the Matador and the Toreador. Both were excellent, but the Matador pulled just slightly ahead of its little brother, thanks mainly to the benefits of having a fully rotating turret. For its sales pitch, DXSC 2020 chose to take a narrative approach, which honestly read like an excerpt from the teabag novel, if there was one. It made for excellent reading, and was accompanied by the best pictures in the competition, even if this one in particular does keep me up at night. So, why no category win for the sales pitch then? Well, while it was excellent in many regards, the emphasis on narrative unfortunately left actual in-depth details and salesmanship slightly lacking compared to the winning pitch, but it's still very much worth a read. Aesthetically, we already know that the Matador is top equal with the A8, Cicada, so we'll press on to the specification criteria exceeded. See, it's so difficult to say. Specification criteria exceeded. Here, the Matador scored full marks for effective frontal armour, and tipping the scales at 6 tonnes when rounded down gave it 4, and 4 out of 5 for weight too. Capable of hitting 30 miles per hour, it scores 3 out of an available 6 for speed. Internal fuel was the bare minimum, but an extra 20 rounds of ammo helps its score here. Finally, it benefits from bonus points for its turret and low profile, giving it a points tally of 15 out of 28, and thus a score of 8 out of 10 in this category. Finally, the Matador gave a good showing at the Proving Grounds. It made up for its slightly subpar acceleration with excellent hill climbing ability, managing to climb the 35 degree slope, despite its considerable armour. Trench crossing ability and suspension tuning were both on point, and gun handling proved on par with the rest of the competition. It also succeeded in claiming a sub 40 second lap time, giving a mobility score of 8.5 out of 10. So, with a total score of 34.75, 
your runner-up for round three, ladies and gentlemen, The Matador by DXSC 2020. Congratulations. And now, the one you've all been waiting for. The winner of Teabag Round 3 is none other than The Cuirassier by Clockyard. Yes, the madman from Tulof Industries has gone and done it again. Picking up a category win along the way, but consistently posting top 5 scores in all the other categories as well. Which means that our reigning champion has succeeded in retaining his crown for another round. The Curassia's sales pitch was unique in that it included a wonderfully in-character video presentation for, uh, uh, for a different tank in it. Seriously, to understand, you'll just have to watch it. Fortunately, I've included it in full at the end of this video so you can watch it, and I suggest that you do. But sales pitches are supposed to be pictures and text only, I hear you cry, and yes, they are indeed. Videos are verboten and will not affect your score. Despite this, it's certainly an amusing and welcome addition, so thanks for taking the time to record it, Clockyard. Anyway, aside from that, this was still a very strong sales pitch, scoring full marks for in-character-ness and 9 out of 10 for everything else. A stat sheet and being slightly less scathing of one's own design would have been all it took to score a category win in sales pitches too. Carassia scored a whopping 9.25 out of 10 in this category, Aesthetically, the Cuirassier is absolutely no slouch, with an outstanding level of detail applied and serious care and attention has gone into painstakingly rivet plating almost every inch of this vehicle. There's top marks for effort here. Meanwhile, the design remains at highly era and nation appropriate to boot. Its X-Factor score is a little lower for being a largely conventional looking light tank, but that didn't stop the Cuirassier scoring, scoring 9 out of 10 for aesthetics. We already know that the Cuirassier was the best tank in terms of specification criteria exceeded, scoring 10 out of 10 in that category, so let's move straight on to the proving grounds. Here the Cuirassier performed similarly to its nearest competitor, the Matador. Acceleration wasn't the best, but reversing, suspension tuning, gun handling and lap time were all top of the class. Unfortunately, it did prove to have some trouble crossing the mid-sized trench at mid-speed, and wasn't quite able to manage the 35 degree slope in my tests costing it a few available points and allowing other designs to overtake it in this category, where it scored 8 out of 10. So then, with a whopping 36.25 out of 40, your round 3 winner is the Cuirassier. The remainder of the Vickers medium tanks will now be dismantled to provide the materials to build the Cuirassier, which will be dropping behind enemy lines on a battlefront near you soon. Congratulations again to Clockyard. You're not allowed to win three times in a row though, okay? Now, before I go, I have a few honourable mentions I want to share with you guys. The first honourable mention goes to the MAST Mark IV by Alijmanen. 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 You know who you are. Because this thing wasn't just a super cool little light tank in its own right, but it also came with an extra blueprint attached that was this thing. Yes, this mad person went and made a whole glider setup for this tank in the style of the Soviet Antonov A-40. It didn't help the score, unfortunately, but it's still remarkable work and well worthy of showcasing here. The second honorable mention goes to the Valkyrie Vector by Luminous Lily. What's so special about this slightly misshapen little light tank? The weight is what is special about it. Weighing in at just 3.99 tons, this is perhaps the lightest possible tank that can also successfully meet the specification criteria. This masterclass in weight saving by Luminous Lily is light enough and small enough that you could theoretically fit two of them into just one Hamilcar glider, which is preposterous and awesome all at the same time, and very impressive work. Finally, as promised, we will round off with our third honourable mention, Clockyard's delightful video as his character Nikolai Tulov. Before I hand over to Clockyard, let me just say that that's all for this video. Thank you to all of our contestants and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you back in 1940 tomorrow for round four. Take care out there. Greetings to my friends at the War Office. I just wanted to give you a minor update in between sessions and show you exactly what we've come up with in the meantime. First, 
let us begin with this. I've developed a new pistol. It is guaranteed to take a man right off his feet with every single shot. The only problem is we still have to ensure that it only takes the targets off his feet. We're working on that and we will get there. We will get there. Uh, second of all, I know that I should not patronize you by explaining the obvious. You and I both know what this is. And most importantly, look. I've got it working. <laughs> Beautiful, is it not? This will be very helpful, I'm certain. And finally, I've heard through the grapevine that you will be needing a new light reconnaissance vehicle. And I certainly have something that I've been working on now. While I'm not exactly certain of your precise specifications, I know that given the right materials, I can make this en masse. Yeah, let me show you exactly what we've got. I give you the LSCL H5 2, a heavy light tank. As you can see, it easily clears any obstacle in its way. Using the Leyland engines that were supplied to us during the first teabag competition, as well as the two-pounder, we have managed to create a 7-ton vehicle that carries a decent amount of firepower very quickly across a battlefield. With its low silhouette and good gun handling, it will be able to take out any threat that comes up against it. Watch as it stands up, not only to the 2cm gun used in the Panzer II, but also the 3.7cm anti-tank gun that is commonly in use by the Wehrmacht. Finally, this vehicle is no slouch when it comes to mobility, as it can easily climb a 30 degree slope. Is that what I think it is? I think I hear a truck coming now. That must be the materials. I will return shortly. <laughs> Sir Charles, there appears to be a minor mix-up here. Uh, you appear to have sent me an old Vickers. Uh, I was expecting something more like cemented steel or a Merlin engine. Something not outdated. Things can't be that bad, can they? Let me check this battle report. One moment. I stand corrected. Okay, well, uh... Okay, I can, I can work with this. I can work with this. I... Actually... I can work with this. Well then, gentlemen, you shall see why I am the greatest madman this side of the channel. You shall see my results in but a week's time. Thank you. <laughs>